One Zambia, One Nation, thank you so much for joining us on the news desk with me, Emos Zulu. Let us take a look at the top stories. Cross-border traders, truck drivers help Comesa for eliminating trade barriers. Police impound truck laden with imported millimil from South Africa. President Hichilema calls on Zambians to uphold culture. Plus, government implores church to take a lead in promoting entrepreneurship. Here is our first item, the Zambia Revenue Authority Cross-Border Traders Association and truck drivers have commended Comesa for eliminating trade barriers. Here is a report. Cross-Border Traders Association in Kasumbalesa, at the border with the Democratic Republic of Congo, have appreciated the work of the common market for Eastern and Southern Africa in ensuring that these traders who have been engaging in illegal trade are educated on the need to ensure they cross the border formally rather than using illegal routes. For small-scale traders, these small-scale traders have been trained in such a way that how can you cross a border formally? So there are formalities that we have been trained on how to cross the border formally because most of them, they normally use bush paths. Why? Because they don't know that there's a component where you can use a facility without paying even duty. Zambia Revenue Authority Station Manager at Kasumbalesa notes that reforms undertaken at the border has resulted in digital operations in promoting efficiency when saving these people crossing the borders. So most of the processes are actually automated. And for Kasumbalesa, you find that uh, there's also a vehicle traffic management system which uh, helps us to manage the traffic flow within the yard, but also for trucks coming in and out efficiently and effectively. The truck drivers are happy with the Comeso Yellow Card, which is recognized as a valid insurance cover in member countries. I'm traveling from uh, Mozambique, getting goods, the pass through Zimbabwe, uh, Zambia, going to DRC. If I'm having this uh, career, Comesa career's license, <coughs> uh, if I'm stopped in Zambia, they just ask me about this uh, license and uh, I show them, they will not question me any questions, they will say pass through. Comesa Information Desk Officer outlines the digital developments at the border. Previously, we used to capture the data using the manually, but right away, uh, through the information we used to give to Comesa, the uh, exams that have come in, and now we are using the copy instead of the puppy. So we thank, we thank the Comesa for doing that. Zambia will host the Comesa Summit of the Heads of State on 8th June, and President Haga Indechirema will be the chairperson for the whole year. And it will strengthen the country's role in regional integration. Tovini Ngombe, Zanis, at Kasumbalesa border. The Parliamentary Committee on Local Government Accounts has aged Kasama Municipal Council to monitor projects and involve end users. Committee Chairperson Darius Mulonda says it is important for the local authority to involve end users. The Committee on Local Government Accounts has visited Kasama District to inspect projects being implemented by the local authority. The team inspected the Mulawala Rural Health Post in Lukasha constituency, which was almost handed over to Ministry of Health with works not up to standard, and the Chikomanino bus station ablution block, whose works have stored at foundation level. The committee expressed displeasure with the quality of work that had been done. But it's so disappointing that uh, this particular a project. I think there was gross negligence from the from the local authority in that there was no monitoring right from the inception of the project up to the completion. It can you imagine that they, these people attempted to hand over a project that is not well done, a project that is that has defects. The chairperson has since urged relevant authorities to take keen interest and investigate the matter.
are both recommending that actually something punitive should be done or should be meted to these officers. We recommend that the relevant authorities or departments should be able to, can, to take keen interest in these two projects and be able to follow them and investigate them. A contractor who has been engaged to redo the flow and put up ablution block at Mulowola Rural Health Center has assured the Committee of Quality Work. We finished this project in the period of uh, two, four weeks. will be done. As we can see, the work has already started. So we are promising the people of Mulowola, Zambia at large, that we are doing the best. Earlier, the committee paid a courtesy call on the provincial administration. <laughs> very, very important, and the projects which our local authorities are required to make your oversight responsibility is very, very important. Town Gankoma reporting for Zanis and Kasama. Luapula Province Minister Derek Chulundika says the region has a deficiency of electricity, especially the industrial area. Take a look at this report. The industrialization program is among the key items on government agenda to grow the economy through the promotion of manufacturing, particularly value addition. And government is working round the clock to create an enabling environment that supports private investments in an effort to allow the development of domestic productive capacities. However, these efforts may prove futile in provinces such as Luapula, where high deficits in electricity supply has been reported. Luapula Province Minister Derek Chulundika has bemoaned the situation that he reviews has not only affected the rural parts, but the industrial area too. The Luapula has had a very serious deficit, especially in terms of industrial energy. As you find that there are not, not too many companies operating from Luapula because of that industrial energy. But we have a very serious deficit. I am trying to avoid numbers because numbers remain in record. <laughs> so the truth is we have a serious deficit, especially with industrial energy. The provincial minister brought this to the fore when a team from the Rural Electrification Authority, RIA, called on him yesterday. Mr. Chilundika has urged the authority to expedite its programs to connect the rural districts in Wapula to the national grid. As you may know, <coughs> Wapula is at the uh, deficit of energy for some time. In fact, from time immemorial, there has been that uh, deficit of energy. So if RIA can come in in this manner and take energy closer to our people, I think it's a plus on the new Don government and on the Zambians themselves. So continue engaging. We have 15 constituencies. We are just talking about four. Last year, government doubled the allocation to the Rural Electrification Authority in an effort to support the development of local businesses and ultimately create jobs. And to actualize this goal, RIA is already on the ground to address such concerns through its many plans, such as the signing of this memorandum of understanding with local authorities in the four districts here. Others that will be signing, I think, in the order of about 15. Uh, as you may be aware, we can't sign MOUs until after the MOUs have been vetted by the Attorney General. So we had another list that has just been approved by the Attorney General. So in the next three weeks or four weeks, we should be signing some more. Through the Rural Electrification Master Plan, government through RIA targets to accelerate the electrification of more rural growth centers including the highly industrial areas here in Mansa district. Jane Simalumbazanis in Mansa. We take our first break and still to come, please impound truck laden with imported millimil from South Africa. For news and current affairs, entertainment, sports, children's programs, and a host of other events in and beyond our borders, Sunny's TV has you covered on Channel 6 and Channel 458 on Topstar. Zambia will next month host the 22nd Common Market for Eastern and Southern Africa Summit for the Heads of State and Government at the Munungushi International Conference Centre, Kenneth Kaunda Wing. The summit will take place from the 6th to the 8th of June, 2023. 
The theme of the summit is economic integration for a thriving Comesa anchored on green investment, value addition, and tourism. Over 3,000 delegates from the Comesa member states and beyond are expected to attend the Comesa summit in Lusaka. This message is brought to you by the Ministry of Information and Media. Welcome back. Police in Central Province have impounded a truck laden with millimil from South Africa, but underneath the contraband was a Zambian brand destined for the Democratic Republic of Congo, DRC. And Central Province Minister Credo Nanjua says the smuggling of millimil will not be tolerated. <laughs> Of this frontliner truck and his employer, Bonnie Kange. The truck, which was en route to the Democratic Republic of Congo, has been impounded in what could have been a hybrid of millimil smuggling. Central Province Minister Credo Nanjua is saddened by the abuse and says the impunity will not be tolerated. This is total smuggling of millimil from here into another foreign market by our own people. But this will not be tolerated. What we are saying here in the Central Province is that the law should be applied in totality. If it means seizing even the truck which is found carrying uh, stolen assets, it has to. The stock itself must be seized. So we we'll wait as we collaborate with other colleagues how the law can be applied on this. We need to send a strong message to those who would be uh, culprits as well. We want to think that this has been ongoing. People have been doing this. The and Provincial Permanent Secretary Milna Monakampo took, took the bags to the driver to yeah, the Instead of importing, taking them to Congo, he took the bags in the shed. And then in the night, they started loading millimil that is locally milled here. With, of course, FRI maize. And then uh, at the end of the day, they load just a few bags on top to disguise the importation. Maybe you can take us there. <coughs> Meanwhile, the driver of the truck now gives his vision of what happened. I was to Zanis reports in Kawe, Central Province. And in a related development, Northern Province Agricultural Coordinator Sylvester Nyendwa is confident that the hiked maize floor price will regulate smuggling of the commodity. Here's a report. Some unscrupulous people had taken advantage of the low prices of maize on the Zambian market to smuggle the commodity to neighboring countries where it was fetching good prices. But the attractive prices that the Food Reserve Agency, FRIA, has offered farmers this marketing season is likely to be a game changer. Northern Province Agriculture Coordinator Sylvester Nyendwa is confident that the increase in maize floor price will help to keep smuggling of the commodity. To some extent, it was a regulate in terms of smuggling, because the price is favorable within the province, within the country. So the farmers are able to sell at a, at a very good price, because it was almost the same price which farmers were rushing for outside Kasama, outside the province, but FRI is there to offer that price within. So to a farmer, it can be saving in terms of transportation, in terms of hoarding, 
in terms of storage. Northern Province Cooperative and Marketing Union Business Manager Kingsley Montali says the upward adjustment of the maize floor price will motivate farmers to grow more maize. It's a good shot in the farmer's arm because it will encourage farmers to grow and cultivate, and cultivate more hectares in the next coming season. This price is favorable in the sense that it, also, it will also improve their livelihoods. Some farmers in Kasama district had this to say. Generally, now that it's a way, no, compared to last year, for Fiat. Last year, to a less per one eighty, to the period this year, now that to run the quarter. Could to a less per one eighty, to the period of this year, now that to run the quarter. Could to a less per one eighty, to the period of this year, Vashte soya beans na nguwamu ni umusangomo wala afurisha mwa wabadimi vashti sishemo soya beans. Helen Bwale for Zanis in Kasama, Northern Province. Now, Rufunsa District Commissioner Richard Dimabena has called on farmers in the area to sell their maize to the Food Reserve Agency, FRA, and take advantage of the increased maize floor price. Mr. Mabena was encouraging farmers during an agricultural block show held in Chunyunyu and revealed that FRA has further increased the number of setter depots from 13 to 15 in the area. <laughs> Activities at the Shinyunyu Tere Center in Rufusa District, where the Ministry of Agriculture is holding the Wunda Wunda Block Show under the theme Inclusive Economic Transformation, and 12 farm camps are showcasing their harvest and produce. Rufusa District Commissioner Richard Mabena is on hand to encourage the farmers and assuring them of government's commitment in promoting the agriculture sector. I mentioned that the government is fully supportive of agriculture industry through various programs such as CASC, provisions of exchange service and several others also, and the other exchange officers to be recruited this year. When marketing, we've been given 15 depots this year. Last year we had only 13 depots. So I'm making earnest appeal to you farmers so that you are able to sell your maize to FRA, not to briefcase buyers. As you all know that, you do know that farming is a business. As it is a business, we should calculate the profit. And this year is an opportunity for you that the maize price has been increased. Farmers are happy with the theme and they have this to say. Theme, Yasho Yad. Inclusive, economic transformation. Tinga Ipan Limule, Kutini Kuzip Fakako, Osa Sia Kalikunse, Muka Pezedwe, maybe Kaseven Sedwe, and Ram. Agriculture dealers are also at hand to explain to the farmers of the products they have to improve their yield. We are here to provide a solution to farmers. We have brought our products that really goes in line with the theme for today. Because our products, they are here to transform the lives of the farmers. Reporting in Rufunsa District, I am Umsekiwa Ndewe. Government has constructed a one by three classroom block at Fikombo Primary School in Chembe District using the 2021 Constituency Development Fund. This is aimed at decongesting the existing five classrooms, which accommodates 475 pupils from early childhood to grade nine. The construction of the 1 by 4 classroom block at Stwalubuka Primary School worth 936,000 kwacha and the construction of a market at Stemfoy worth 375,000 kwacha in Chembe District are nearing completion. Chembe Constituency Development Fund Project Monitoring Team, led by Chembe Town Council Secretary Grace Kanyata, monitored and inspected the two projects beginning with Twalubuka Primary School. This project is worth value for money. Uh, the contractor, the workmanship, it has been excellent. We are happy as a council and uh, uh, on the 24th we'll be commissioning this project to be handed over to the school management. The contractor has done well mm -hmm. for this project. 
and we congratulate him. Where are you, contractor? The Constituency Development Fund monitoring team proceeded to monitor and inspect Temfue market. This market is almost complete. It is now at 90%. The remaining work here is only for painting inside the market. And outside the market, as you, as you can see, there is the landscaping. The landscaping is not completed well. Uh, this market will cover a population of 2,000 plus. There are about 48 stands. As you can see, as we are coming along the road, there are people trading there who are about 90 plus. They are trading under makeshift shelters. So once we conclude and the market is handed over, uh, those people will move to this market. And that will mean that uh, they'll be working under shifts. There'll be sh two shifts. The inspected projects are scheduled for commissioning and handing over to the community next week. Mijel Omwemba, Zanis, Nchembe District, Luapula Province. Still ahead in the news, President Hichilema calls on Zambians to uphold culture. We take a break. Life is a journey full of varied experiences. Can we reach our desired destiny? Can we achieve our desired goals? If yes, then how? Join Juliet Mutale on Thursday at 18.30 hours on How I Made It, a program that highlights various success stories from different personalities with different life experiences and backgrounds. Catch Zanis TV on Channel 6, DTT, and Channel 458, DTH. Zanis TV, the people's channel. Hello, it's time for you to know your rights. For ignorance of the law is no defense. People should report any case of gender-based violence to the police. They should not be tempted to compromise the cases. Because compromising a case of gender-based violence is actually a, an offense. Zambia, like any other country, has got laws that govern the welfare of its citizens. We provide uh, some check, some oversight on the police service. When an officer misconducts himself, he's alone. One person being beaten is enough for the commission to move. The, the, the constitution tells us that the people of Zambia must enjoy their liberties. Every week on Thursday at 19.30 hours, the Zambia News and Information Services, ZANIS, brings to your screens a program dubbed Police and the Community. If we, uh, the police, and you and the public, we work together because the common enemy we have before us is the criminal. Catch Zanis TV on Channel 6, DTT, and Channel 458, DTH. Zanis TV, the people's channel. Zambia will next month host the 22nd Common Market for Eastern and Southern Africa Summit for the Heads of State and Government at the Munungushi International Conference Center, Kenneth Kaunda Wing. The summit will take place from the 6th to the 8th of June, 2023. The theme of the summit is economic integration for a thriving Comesa anchored on green investment, value addition and tourism. Over 3,000 delegates from the Comesa member states and beyond are expected to attend the Comesa summit in Lusaka. This message is brought to you by the Ministry of Information and Media. Meanwhile, President Hichilema has called on Zambians to build strong families that contribute to building a productive nation. Mr. Hichilema has since called on parents to inculcate values in their children that promote respect of, for others, hard work, and unity. He takes to the dance group in a unique performance many have termed Bali dance, symbolizing the joy of a parent marrying off his daughter. This is at a traditional wedding reception the first family have hosted for the latest couple in the country. Culture in dance characterized this wedding reception and the Bali dance was another unique feature. Here, President Haga in the Hijilema called for strong family values. Marriage is an institution which is the bedrock of society. Kohunga society la distance. Ilama values, those values, that distance comes from the family. As the English would say, you can't teach an old horse new tricks. 
So you teach a young horse new tricks of good behavior, respect for other people. Starts in the family. Hard work. Starts in the family. Religion starts in the family. Customs, everything. Family then extends into communities. Village, Mui, chiefdom, district, constituents, district, province, then Zambia. If we miss it at the family level as a country, we have missed it. A representative from the groom's family shared a message of advice to the newlyweds. Marriage is not an institution of pride between husband and wife. Please hear that. Move to what? Tabrima Wilson Pola and Pilinovio Pay. Kamando Nabaro to Nabo to Riva to Havana, Riva to Vandana. We must have respect for one another. That will create an environment of love and continuous joy. And the local people are happy to have been part of this event. After all was said and done, President Hagainde Hijilema thanked the multitudes of people who supported the wedding reception. Kulumba ndi mwe. No mwa higa gogu no. Muntu munji munji. Nationally, to await a wedding ceremony, Guru Saga. As families jointly, we took a decision that Nibari Gumanda Ma, Vaya Lavantu Avalo Abagaji Interinte. Jumiana Lumba Zanis in Namwala. President Hichlema has called on Zambians to uphold culture. It can be described as an indirect economic boost to lodge owners in Monze, Choma and Namwala as many people from near and far booked almost all the rooms with some having camped for some days at Naminwe farm. These were the guests who came to witness the wedding reception for President Hagainde Ejirema's daughter. Last night, they joined local traditional dancing groups in what is described as Marindo by the locals, which is a precursor for the main wedding event. And today, during the wedding reception, President Hagainde Ijirema called on Zambians to uphold cultural values. You learn from each other. It's not a shame to have been Kolola. Bana Waiya at Nkolola is uncivilized. Wevo. Let's support our headmen, our elders, our chiefs, and ourselves to sustain and rebuild culture. Uh, we are saying all aspects of our culture must really be supported. That's the value we bring to the nation. That is the value they bring to the nation. I can mention all the corners. This is the country God puts together. Chief Hamsonde of Wengwa and Chief Dennis Chiawa of Kafiwe equally supports the idea. Revival, you know, the old traditional customs because, you know, it disciplines the children. I wanted to appeal to some other parents to emulate, you know, what the HH family and his daughter have done. If we do that one, we will have meaningful children who will go in for meaningful marriages. It is quite important and it must be revived. We cultivate our fields, the way we build our houses, the way we clean around. There are a lot of things which goes with culture. Mike Munkombwe, Zanis, Inamwala District, Southern Province.
Thank you, Mike, for that report. Now, Mpulungu Town Council has set out 43 youths to Navana Business College in Kitwe to be trained in the operation of earth moving equipment. Mpulungu Town Council Chairperson D.A. Sichilengwe explained that the local authority will invest over 500,000 Kwacha 2023 Constituency Development Fund CDF to train the youths who will be operating the equipment. Christine Muselu has more in the following report. These youths of Mpulungu district are full of joy. This is because they have been selected to go for the training under the Constituents Development Fund Skills Development Bursary component. The local leadership are happy with the decision to send the youth to acquire skills. We also have a program where we want to come and do, you know, our roads. Now it's from that basis that uh, we had to pick our colleagues that we just witnessed to go for skills training. The number in total at the moment there are 50, but uh, only 43 names were approved. Uh, the reason why these others were not approved is because they're saying they're above age. But uh, there's a, a plea that I want to make to government that you see uh, 46 or 40 Someone is still very active, is economically active. So if that's the case, I think certain you know, the guidelines have, have to be revisited so that we don't you know, leave out the, these people who can do the work that can bring in the development in our As parents in Ikulongo, we are so glad, but today we witness that it has happened for our youth from here uh, now going to Mufulila to undertake the training of uh, uh, learning how to, to, to drive earth equipment, equipment machines. The youths are thankful to government for giving them the opportunity. <laughs> Christine Mselu, reporting for the news in Impulongo. District of Northern Province have arrested a Congolese witch doctor based in Sama District for raping a 21 year old woman. Northern Province Commanding Officer Gloria Mulele said Eunice Chansa had been taken to Saidi Mlenga, a witch doctor of Congolese origin for treatment by her husband to help her conceive. Mulenga, however, alleged to have forced himself on the woman on two occasions on the pretext that it, it was a way of helping her conceive. Ms. Mulele said this in a statement released to Zanis. The provincial police commanding officer said the victim has been issued a medical report form for the purpose of medical examination while a docket has been opened. Minister of Justice Mulambo Haimbe says the involvement of the church in entrepreneurship is cardinal as the church is a moral and ethical compass of how business should be conducted. Lakson Makoza has more. Adventist main organization AMO members drawn from 25 districts under the Midlands West Zambia Conference gathered in their numbers at the government complex for a one-day entrepreneurship conference held under the theme Equipped for Life and Eternity. The event which was well attended was graced by Minister of Justice Mlambo Ayimbe. In addressing the participants, Mr. Ayimbe encouraged AMO members to take advantage of the various empowerment schemes being provided by the government and access financial support. Government to ensure that it puts in place the necessary policies and programs aimed at creating a conducive environment for entrepreneurship, including access to finance, business development support, and regulatory reforms. Mr. Aimbe, who is Lusaka, Central Member of Parliament, commended AMO for initiating the Entrepreneurship Conference. Let me also take the opportunity to commend the Adventist men of the Seventh-day Adventist Church for organizing this conference on entrepreneurship as its significance is immense to the growth of our economy. And speaking at the same conference, Northern Zambia Union Conference President counseled AMA members to engage in decent business ventures. I pray among you as Christians and friends of Christians that 
the couple there. When you learn business, stop supplying the air to the government. As a Christian, you must be ashamed. As part of biblical teachings based on Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to 31, among men, we are reminded that they are meant to have dominion over the earth. They are meant to have dominion. Today, as the Adventist men's organization, we are just here to remind ourselves and to remind the church that we were meant to have dominion. Minwa Midlands West Zambia Conference President is elated with the manner the AMO organized the One Day Entrepreneurship Conference. AMO has pulled a big one today. AMO has set the test. AMO has really given us the example of how we must engage our community. For Zanis, I'm Lakson. And lastly, in our news, Minister of Youth, Sports and Arts, Elvis Nkandu, has implored Zambians to actively engage in physical sporting activities in order to prevent non-communicable diseases. Nkandu stated that physical activities should not be left only to sporting persons, but that every person, regardless of gender, disability, and age groups, should actively get involved. The minister said this when he graced the annual Bankers Sports Day at the Olympic Youth Development Center, OYDC, in Lusaka. Meanwhile, Nkandu has commended banking institutions for promoting a healthy lifestyle among its workforce. And in a related development, Nkandu says the, govern, the government is in a process of coming up with a one day, with a day in a month dedicated to exercising. Speaking earlier at the same event, Zambia Institute of Banking and Financial Services, ZIBFS President Moses Shuko, informed the minister that Bankers Sports Day is an important day on the calendar for bankers. Without creating time for recreation activities, it can lead you to both physical and mental health issues. Therefore, it is very imperative to build wellness among professionals through physical and sporting activities. I am further informed that most of the financial institutions represented here have been engaging in various sporting activities at institutional level. A health profession is a productive asset in the workplace, and their productivity results in building a healthy and resilient financial sector. Because without good health, even the most effective employee cannot perform to expectation. Therefore, good health through an active and health life, health lifestyle must be every professional's priority. As we end the news, here's a reminder of the top stories. Cross-border traders track drivers' health commesa for eliminating trade barriers. Police impound truck laden with imported millimil from South Africa. President Hichilema calls on Zambians to uphold culture. And lastly, government implores church to take a lead in promoting entrepreneurship. We end the news just there. Thank you so much for watching. On behalf of the entire production and news crews, my name is Emma Zulu. Bye for now.